Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the session. So we'll just move straight on then. So today, um, we really want to talk a bit about pharmacy and care homes working very much in partnership. And uh, through the session, also, we're going to bring that alive by just talking a little bit about um, working um, in dementia care and um, optimizing antipsychotic medication. So we're going to start off by thinking about how can pharmacy care for you and the patients in the care setting. But initially, just want to spend just a, a couple of minutes just thinking about the role of the pharmacist. And um, I think if we think back uh, over the last sort of 30 or 40 years, the role of the pharmacist has really changed. Uh, back uh, 30 or 40 years ago, it was one that was very much involved in the compounding and the compiling of medicines, but still very much a role as the expert in the medicines, providing healthcare and advice. And although the part of the role which was involving compounding has now changed and transformed, still the role of pharmacists is still very much around being the experts in the medicines uh, that are provided both through prescriptions and over the counter for advice to patients. So just to talk a little bit more about that, certainly absolutely at the heart of everything that uh, the pharmacy teams provide is about supply of medicines through the dispensing process. But actually, since the new pharmacy contract in 2005, the role of pharmacy has really developed and expanded and is playing a much bigger part now in medicines optimization. And there's been a number of things that pharmacy and pharmacy teams are now doing to support patients and the wider NHS. Some examples of that are around medicines use reviews a really vital service provided by pharmacies and been going for a number of years now. And that was really came out of a number of insights, but one, one that I'll share with you is just that um, between 8 and 10% of all hospital admissions were as a result of some sort of issue with medication. And therefore, medicines use reviews can play a really vital part in supporting patients in taking their medicines and using them correctly and can actively help to reduce that issue. More recently, the new medicine service has been introduced and that is very much focused around patients that have been newly diagnosed with conditions and newly prescribed medications. And what is, is true in that situation is that a very high proportion of those patients often either don't take those medicines when they're first prescribed or they take them incorrectly. And uh, that can be up to half of those patients. And pharmacy can play a really, really important role in supporting those patients in ensuring that they are taking those uh, medications for the right reasons and in the right way to get the clinical benefit. Pharmacy can also play a big part in supporting with long-term conditions, such as respiratory conditions, diabetes, and there's much more work to be done in that sphere. But more widely, within the community, pharmacy can support with self-care, looking at minor ailments and well-being, but also working very closely with colleagues in public health, looking at areas such as smoking cessation, emergency hormonal contraception, and with drug user services and also can play a very important part in signposting patients to different members of the primary and secondary care team. So pharmacy can absolutely in the future be that vital and important third pillar of the NHS. I guess we're all very much aware of the challenges faced around funding of the NHS and the requirement for ongoing improvement to efficiency. And pharmacy can very much be a, a vital part of achieving some of those efficiency gains through the work that they're doing to support the wider agenda. Gail. Thank you. Hello. Um, so how can pharmacy really help um, care homes and care home residents? Um, 
Increasingly, um, the residents of care homes are becoming older and frailer. Um, and in the past, many of these people would have been cared for in the hospital setting. But as more and more people move down a layer, um, previously residents in uh, care homes are now staying longer in their own homes. Um, and increasingly, the residents have more long-term conditions. They're frailer. They're on multiple medications. Um, and this problem is increasing. So. Um, it's estimated that in 10 years' time, there'll be a 25% increase in the number of people over the age of 75, and that rises in another 10 years to 65% more people over the age of 75. So increasingly, um, the elderly are going to be living in the care setting, and they'll be living there with increasingly multiple conditions. They'll have asthma, they'll have diabetes, they'll have arthritis, um, and that will mean they will be on more and more medication and be needing more and more care care um, and this brings with it some challenges so elderly people are three times as likely to suffer from an adverse effect of a drug um, hospital admissions in the elderly are twice as high due to drug related incidents um, and on average, every resident is on seven or eight medicines. And there is a real need to have those medicines regularly and thoroughly reviewed to make sure they're both appropriate but also necessary um, just to keep these patients safe. Um, one of the key areas for concern um, is around adverse reactions to drugs. Um, and a recent study showed that of 120 patients that were looked at, 40%, so a third of all those patients had some sort of drug, um, drug sensitivity, and yet that was recorded in both the care home, the GP, and the pharmacy for only two of those residents. So you can see there's a real risk um, if we're not really looking after um, the well-being of patients in terms of risk of adverse reactions. The other thing, because people are on so, medi so many medicines, there is an increased risk of drug administration and prescribing errors. Um, uh, and a recent study, the Care Home Use of Medicines report, the CHUMS report, looked in detail at the risk and the medication errors, particularly in the care home and nursing setting. Um, and they found that these errors were happening in four main areas, prescribing, dispensing, administration, and monitoring. So you can see there the split of um, type of error. So about 19% of the errors were happening at the prescribing stage, and half of those were incorrect or incomplete prescriptions. So perhaps there wasn't a dosage time, it was just as required, it didn't state the strength or the form. Um, and 25% of all the prescribing errors were uh, an unnecessary drug. So actually a patient had been prescribed it in the past, no longer needed to be on it, but it had still been left on their prescription. 24% um, of the errors were due to the dispensing process. Uh, by far the most common one of those was labeling and labeling errors. Um, so again, a real risk in that part. 20% um, of the errors uh, were at drug administration, um, the actually point of administration to the patient. And half of all those errors were errors of omission, where a patient should have had a medication, but actually was, was failed to be given it at that time. And quite often, um, certainly with the use of multiple dose containers, not all of their medication will fit. So creams, inhalers, certain types of medicines are separate from the system. And there's a real risk actually actually that there's a failure to give a patient a medicine that they should have had. Um, and 37%, um, surprisingly high um, amount due to monitoring, and that's where there's been some sort of failure to check or ascertain whether or not a patient needed that particular medicine at that particular dose at that time. And obviously because of patients um, finding it very difficult to get out of, of the home setting, um, it's very hard to deliver the right monitoring to that group of patients. Um, a bit of a startling fact, really, that came out from the CHUMS report um, is on average, seven out of ten residents are exposed to at least one medication error on every single drug round. And they looked in a period of a month, um, if a resident was on uh, three times a day dosage, by the end of the month, they would have been 99% likely to have had one of those types of administration area. So a real key area that we can all work together to really try and uh, reduce that risk for our, for our residents. 
Uh, so the report also gave four key areas of concern. So where are these errors most likely to happen? Uh, the first one is around the Mar chart, um, and especially in regard to discontinued items. And there's a real part that communication between the GP, the home, and the pharmacy will play in that. Um, the other one is just practically the interruptions during a drug round um, and it's very difficult for a, a carer or a nurse to get round a complete drug round without some form of interruption, quite often from another member of the, of the team. Um, Drug trolleys and storage, again, can be very difficult, especially if there are different types of packaging, different types of dosage forms, and all the medicines aren't in the same place for every patient. Uh, and the key one is communication between the pharmacy and the care home, but also between the GP, and it is very much a three-way communication between GP, pharmacy, and care home. Um, so what are the simple options? So what are the simple things that we can do to really start to reduce some of the errors? So by looking at where the most common types happen, what can we very quickly and easily do? Uh, the first one is by far is just avoid interruptions and where trials have been done to protect the carer from being interrupted during a drug round, that really did reduce the number of certainly omission errors um, for people. Um, also, once daily dosages, um, is it really necessary for somebody to have a drug three times a day? Can it be given once a day? And it, can it perhaps not be given in the morning? So the morning drug round is by far the busiest, the more high risk. Can that be safely moved to the lunchtime or the evening? Um, and that's again where pharmacy can really support with that. Um, all of the PRN and when required medication must be recorded on the MARS sheet and a real clear plan of when the patient should be having that. Um, and the MARS sheet should always be a printed form and um, at all costs really avoid handwriting anything at all onto the MARS sheets. Uh, and finally, again, it's up to pharmacists to provide really clear patient information leaflets and background information so that the carers really understand as much as they can about the medicines that people are taking. Um, the other thing just to share with you, there's been some recent guidance from the Pharmaceutical Society that has really looked at how do we best use multi-compartment compliance aid. And although for some people there is absolutely a place for these, um, quite often patient pack dispensing together with the right mask sheet um, and real great training of the teams is proving in an increasingly safer way to administer medicines. Some of the uh, advantages of patient pack dispensing. Um, with monitored dosage systems, there's a little bit of a risk that people don't quite pay so much attention to what they're doing. Uh, everything's there, it's all right in front of them. And sometimes it will take away that little bit of double check that your carers may have. Um, and there is sometimes an increased level of dispensing errors because of labeling issues uh, with monitored dosage. Um, the other tricky can be that actually up to 40% of medicines, as I said earlier, can't actually be packaged. So the creams, the inhalers, um, it's very difficult to have everything together for one patient. Um, and the st stability of packaged medicines is sometimes unproven. Um, so they're, they're not, without, not without issue. Increasingly now um, and in the future, we're going to have technology-based systems. Um, and these have been shown to reduce administration areas, errors, um, especially when they're used in conjunction with patient pack dispensing. Um, and moving on into the future, that will probably prove to be one of the safest and most effective um, means of administration. So just a quick look now around what's there to support you um, uh, around standards and guidance of medicines administration in the care homes. Um, it's covered um, under the Health and Social Care Act and compliance is mon monitored by the CQC and I'm sure all of you that uh, work in the care home setting are more than familiar with this. Um, it's covered under Outcome 9 which covers um, med management of medicines um, and the grades there of 1 to 4 and obviously CQC you see really do focus on the one and two outcomes where there's poor or inadequate standards of medicine administration. So how have been, things been improving over the last 10 years? And actually, yeah, they've been improving. So back in 2003, only 40% of all of care and nursing homes inspected actually passed outcome nine. Um, that's risen to 70% over the last 10 years, which is great to see such an improvement. Um, 
Unfortunately, that means 30 to 40 percent of all care and nursing homes are still failing to meet outcome nine of the CQC inspection. And I know the work from the work that we do that is increasingly an area where, where we are able to provide support and advice um, to really to really help you. So, medication errors, what is the reality? Um, we've done a lot of uh, work, as I say, looking at where, where can we really support. Um, the big thing comes about to be three-way communication and how does the pharmacy, the care home and also the GP really work in partnership to take care of the patient so that everybody is looking um, at the same picture. It's very difficult sometimes just to find out what should a patient be on, especially if they've recently come out of hospital, the GP may not have had the notes, the pharmacy may not have a record. So communication between those three people is really key. And there's a real opportunity to, for pharmacy as the experts in medicines to really take a lead in that and really make sure we're not only looking after the care home owners and carers but also really looking after the patients as well. So just to share with you some of the key findings from a CQC, the common things that they're picking up on outcome nine, wrong medicines being given to patients, um, poor recording of the medicines, so not recording correctly on the MARS sheets, and also inappropriate storage of medicines. Um, maladministration of medicines, so you know, if you think around inhalers, patches, creams, um, it, it's really challenging for our carers to, to understand the detail of a lot of that. Um, sometimes there's no prescribed medication available. Um, if a patient's medicine has been changed or they've recently come out of hospital, they may miss medicine altogether. Um, some may, medicine may be unlabeled or poorly labeled. Um, inaccurate records of what has occurred, um, especially with new staff, night shifts, weekends. It's increasingly difficult to get a full picture um, of every interaction. Discrepancies in controlled drugs, so uh, a real big area of, um, of work for everybody is around the controlled drugs and that's fraught with danger. Um, and there's no quality assurance available quite often to assess staff competence. So they may well have had some training, but how well are we making sure that they are still competent and able to do that well? Um, and then also, unfortunately, administering out-of-date medicines. They are all the, the common things that, that are being found at the moment um, under Outcome 9. So how can pharmacy help? So uh, over to Nigel. Thank you, Gail. And um, so, yeah, I, I think so. We can really see that there are obviously some real challenges that together we need to face into. And pharmacy can play a big role in, in supporting and working in partnership with uh, care home teams to make a really big difference for patients. And uh, first of all, uh, I suppose looking at the core area of um, dispensing, there's some things that pharmacy teams can absolutely do to make a difference. So firstly, around some of the areas of looking um, at the way things are set up for the homes, around clarifying all as directed doses. So there's a real clarity with the GP of how is that this medicine expected to be given. Making sure that routes of administration are clearly indicated that where there's tubes or, or, or bottles, that they're labeled individually so that directions don't get lost. As Gail mentioned earlier about any when required medications, make sure that's really fully understood and that they're not dispensed within monitored dosage systems and therefore are not just given sort of regularly without uh, due cause. Certainly there's some work being done around just making sure that um, complete orders are sent out wherever possible and where there are any issues that there's excellent communication um, around um, what can be done and specific times of arrival. Gail mentioned earlier around making sure that there's fully printed and accurate MAR sheets to support. And also, pharmacy can help through training, both in terms of medicines administration and advice, and through systems training. But actually, that those are part of some of the core activities of pharmacy. But I think there's so much more, and just like to talk a, bit, a little bit about uh, some of those areas now. So pharmacists can provide great support and advice to homes through advice visits. And these visits can serve a number of purposes, working really closely with, with yourselves in the care home teams. Firstly, on providing advice on the safe and secure handling of medicines, looking at supply, storage, 
administration of medicines, training and, of course, medicines disposal as well. Also can provide help with clinical advice on medicines optimization, thinking about directions and timings, ensuring there's no duplicate items to treatments for the same condition and also supporting around the monitoring of some of those really critical drug molecules which are higher risk, such as warfarin, lithium, and methotrexate. One of the key areas that within some of these advice visits that pharmacists can focus on is looking at antipsychotic medication prescribing to support patients with dementia. It's true at the moment that about 80% of patients in care have some form of dementia. And 180,000 patients in care are currently taking some form of uh, antipsychotic medication. And yet probably only 20% of those, about 36,000 people, are really getting great benefit from those medications. And it's really serving a great purpose. There's a great piece of work to be done there. And in a recent study done with pharmacy working with some care organizations through some reviews of antipsychotic prescribing, working very closely with the care home teams and with GPs, it's been possible to reduce antipsychotic prescribing by over 20%. And that both can create a significant improvement in the quality of lives for those patients, but also, of course, it will make a saving for the NHS as well. So some great work that can be done, really helping these very, very important and vulnerable patients and a piece of work that uh, um, we, we hope will continue um, and uh, spread further. Also, in addition on the pharmacy advice visits, work can be done to look at uh, look, looking at waste medication and how best that can be reduced and avoided um, and dealt with in the right way together. But also, so much more can be offered um, in working in great partnership together with homes and with other partners in the primary care setting. We've already talked a bit earlier about medicine use reviews and new medicine service. Of course, those are provided an awful lot through community pharmacy, but actually those could be provided in the care setting as well to ensure that patients are on the right medicines for the right reason and are taking them in the right way. There's a big opportunity to work very closely with advice and support on long-term conditions such as diabetes, dementia, and also in the area of palliative care. Pharmacy is a great resource and a great level of expertise. It provides great accessibility with pharmacy often available and open um, late at night and across seven days. Advice being available um, both um, face to face and on the phone at any time. And also available to provide urgent medical um, supply with same day delivery and advice. Also through many pharmacy organizations, there's access to various web portals which can provide invaluable advice both on conditions and treatments. And one such example of that is WebMD. So in a fairly short period of time today, hopefully we've described that we believe that pharmacy has a great role to play, um, working very much in partnership with care homes, care home teams, and the wider pharmacy, wider um, primary care teams to really make a big difference to the care of patients in um, care homes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that really interesting presentation. I'm sure we all learned a lot from it. Um, are there any questions from, for anybody? Um, there's a microphone to go, would you like to? Hi, my name's, my name's Petra. I work in um, a care home and reach team in Leicestershire. Um, we go into care homes with people with quite severe dementia. I was quite interested when you were showing the slides on the um, <coughs> CQ CQC compliance with medication, that actually the residential care sector had a higher success rate than the nursing homes. And I wondered if you've got any sort of ideas around why that might be. Um, 
I think the thing that springs to mind quite often is, is the number of medicines that, that people are on. Um, so quite often in the nursing setting, they're on um, uh, more medicines. So as I said earlier, the multiple uh, medicines, um, there, there's more risk of issues. Um, the other factor that may play a difference is obviously sometimes the qualifications and, and staff turnover within those settings. Um, but there was no clear, there was no clear pattern um, particularly or, or any insight into that but it, it does pose a really interesting question but uh, do Thank you have you. any views from your experience that from what you've seen that, that may, may well, play one of the that? things that occurred to me is is nursing homes tend to be very much bigger yeah um, and whether it's that staff are actually more overstretched because they're actually delivering medications to a larger number of people yeah mm. so maybe that's something that maybe ought to be split between more people you know people being responsible yeah. for a certain number of patients. Yeah, for a smaller unit, yeah. But I did yeah. also wonder whether it's a little bit around um, complacency in that nursing homes tend to have qualified staff yeah. who, absolutely no disrespect being a qualified nurse myself, but may actually feel that, or may actually not be quite as careful because they are qualified. Yes. Whereas unqualified staff may just take that little bit more caution to double check. Yeah. I think you're right. I think I mentioned earlier, you know, that that potentially can be a danger with some of the monitored dose packaging because it takes away that that need to think about yeah. it that little bit more. So although it might be more convenient in some ways, it can also be more dangerous because people aren't sometimes perhaps being as careful uh, as they should be. Yeah, I think it might be an interesting area to sort of monitor a bit closely. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks. Mm.